Oh jeez. Hello. Is this intro overused? Hello, my name is Mia and today I present to you a type of video that used to give me a lot of anxiety but hopefully it makes you less anxiety -ful. for your portfolio submission to art schools and stuff. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm doing this. Like, I remember I swore to myself I wouldn't make this type of video because back then it like when I was applying to college, whenever I saw like portfolio, my portfolio videos, it used to make me feel so like, it used to give me so much anxiety, but here I am. I just want to preface this that like, I'm really grateful that you let, I'm really grateful that I even have the chance to apply to art schools because I know not every parent is that supportive of having a career like art because it's said to be less stable, but there are debates about that. So for your portfolio, every school is kind of different, so um, the pieces I include in this video are the pieces I included in all my portfolios, but like some of them are slightly tweaked based on like what the school requires and how many pieces they require like some require less so I submitted less um, and some have like assignments and challenges like the Parsons challenge and the RISD assignment um, which is a separate piece from the portfolio so I'll be pointing out like which ones I used for what also I feel like um, every portfolio like not only for schools is different, for, but for every person it's also really different because um, everyone makes art differently. I feel like art is so subjective that like if you have confidence that your art is good then like I feel like people will believe that your art is good because it's not just faking it till you make it, but like if you believe it's good then it, it is good. I think. And even if this video does give you a bit of stress thinking about these types of things, I hope it still helps a bit, even if it's just a tiny bit. And the most important thing I want to say is that every portfolio from person to person is different, and in the end you're trying to show who you are as a person and what type of art you make. So in the end, even if a school does reject you, maybe that school is just not fit for the art that you make. So even if you did go to that school, maybe you wouldn't be the happiest. Because in the end, it's finding like the best fit school for yourself, not just like going to the most prestigious one. Or at least that's what the university counselors at my school say. Yes. Also, this is the first time I'm showing my face publicly, publicly on the internet, and it's kind of scary. I don't know if this is what you expected me to look like, but I draw myself quite a lot in my comics on Instagram, so I feel like I portray myself pretty accurately. So hopefully it's not too surprising. Anyway. On to the main part of this video, which is showing you guys my portfolio that I applied to three schools for. So I applied for early action and early decision, and that basically means applying earlier than regular, which is like February times. So I've applied during last November, so November of 2021. And I applied to ED, which is a binding decision. So basically, you have to go to that school if you don't, if you do get in, not if you don't get in. Um, yeah, so you have to go to that school if you do get in. And I applied to ED for RISD, which is Rhode Island School of Design. Um, and then for my early actions, which is EA, which is non-binding. 
so if you get in you can still choose like what school you want to go to. I applied to Parsons and Northeastern. Northeastern is less an art school but- oh jeez. Northeastern is less of an art school but I've heard that like their art program is still good so I was considering it but my top school is still RISD which is why I applied early decision to it. How you submit your portfolio is you use an app called, or an online website, I don't really know what it is, called Slide Room, and you basically um, put your photos or videos of your artworks inside, and you can title it, add the size measurements of your artwork, and also add a description. And I really advise um, using the description. Like I personally wrote a lot in the description because I feel like I had a lot to, a lot I wanted to say. And it also helps show like your process of like how you made that artwork, which I think is pretty useful in to show. Yeah. So my first piece is called Abundance of Orchids. I'll put it here or here. Yeah, I'll put it on this side. So my first piece is called Abundance of Orchids and I made this piece in 2020 and this is actually a piece I made for school because um, I take something called the IB which is the International Baccalaureate I think that's what it stands for but we just call it IB and for IB we basically have to make um, minimum of eight artworks um, for like a final exhibition at the end of the two years. Um, it's a two-year program. So this piece I made for school, it's a 80 by 110 cm piece. It's like a mixed media piece on a piece of cardboard and I basically did some sort of collage thing. Um, I did like big paper cutouts. Oh, I had to like, I had to change the measurements to feet, no, to inches because that's what the US system uses, but I forgot what it is in inches already. I just know it's 80 by 110 cm, so it's pretty big. It's like big. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how to show you guys because. I don't have any of my pieces here in person because they're all either at school or digital. So for this piece, uh, I basically did a bunch of paper cutouts and the figure in the middle is, um, is a digital drawing I did and then I printed it out to stick on top. And it was so big I actually had to print it out on two separate pieces of paper and like stick them together. Um, this piece is basically about um, childhood curiosity. Um, my whole portfolio is kind of based around childhood curiosity and like the wonder of childhood. So I'll just read out my um, I'll read out my portfolio description that I wrote. So, it's quite lengthy, but so it starts with: Do we lose our childhood curiosity as we move in? Do we lose our childhood curiosity as we move into adulthood? When did you last ask a hundred questions a day out of pure curiosity? A hundred is the average number of questions three-year-olds ask their parents every day. As we grow older and gain more experience, we might not be as inclined to be curious and ask as many questions. Reasons could be because we think we know it all already or we simply do not think to ask more. This artwork illustrates a child curiously looking at an orchid flower surrounded by blooming purple orchids. Orchids are commonly associated with beauty and I chose to use purple orchids because they symbolize respect, admiration, and dignity. Um, the orchids symbolize what I imagine curiosity to become as I move into adulthood, which is keeping an appreciation of beauty and continuing to ask questions. Okay. My second artwork is called bouquet of weeds and it's basically a canvas acrylic painting with rattan sculptural elements surrounding it um so let me read the description for this one 
This piece was inspired by my childhood memory of picking plant weeds to make small bouquet, bouquet arrangements. Plant weeds are commonly disfavored compared to more conventional flowers, but in the eyes of a child, they may all be the same. Adults might just see weeds as pests economically and nutritionally, but children don't have the preconceptions that adults may have, so they can find fascination within weeds. The child in the painting is curiously reaching outwards, fully immersing themselves in the environment. They are further brought to life by the protruding wall rattan structure surrounding the painting. And my third piece is called Leaving, which is an 81 by 110 cm piece. Um, it's like most of my artworks are mixed media because I really like using multiple medias to make stuff. And for this one, I basically used like cardboard that I found and like a paper board for the top panel and I just painted on top of it and I added like tape behind it. I'll read the description I used for this one. So orchid plants break out of their structured pots to escape human society after being domesticated. Tired of being neat little plants that just sit still and look pretty, nowadays flowers and plants can be shipped throughout cardboard boxes, contributing to consumerism culture. Especially during festivals such as Chinese New Year, which happens to be today when I'm recording it. Okay, that's besides the point. Um, plants and flowers are brought for, bought for decoration and are thrown away shortly after the festival. This influenced me to use scraps of cardboard as a base to paint the orchids running away, and attaching the pieces using different types of packaging tape, tapes with masking tape to make it seem as if the orchids are escaping from the cardboard boxes that trap them. Yes, there is a reason behind everything, even if I came up with it later. <laughs> oh yeah, I just want to mention something else to do with art. A lot of the times, like, you might think that you draw things that are meaningless, but the thing is, you can add meaning to it afterwards as well. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, sometimes you draw it because you want to, and then afterwards, the more you think about it, it's like, oh, this might mean this, and then it creates meaning. And even if there is no meaning, the meaning is that there is no meaning, so there is still a meaning. <laughs> anyway, moving on. My next piece is called How Is Your Day? This is also a mixed media piece, but it's more sculptural. So I basically um, created clay human. Like, they're like orchid humans. So the head of the orchid people I made using wire and I wrapped it with um, colored thread like multiple color threads so it creates like a prettier color mixed color thing <laughs> um and then i basically attached it to a body and i made it using polymer clay and then on top of that i painted it green to make it look like it's a plant and then for the bee i also made using wire except that i covered it I, I like wrapped it with string, like a fluffy string. I actually have it here. Um, here it is, and it's attached to this one. <laughs> the paint is peeling, but this is a piece as you can see it's fluffy. And then this small orchid right here riding it. The arms like broke off, so I have to like super glue them back together. But you can't see it in the photo, and that's all that matters because they only see the photo. And I am also emphasizing how the photos, like taking a good photo of your artwork, really does matter. Because like even if your artwork is really good, if you take a bad photo of it and it doesn't look good, then the people looking at your portfolio can't really tell that it's a good artwork or like how much effort you put into it. Yes. Okay. That was a bit hectic. Let me read the description I wrote for this one. So this one is called How Is Your Day? It's a mixed media piece and the description is in this piece, it looks as if the purple orchid person on the left is asking how is your day to the purple orchid person on the right. 
The contrast between the casual and ordinary question of how is your day and the surreal narrative where the orchids have built their own society creates a, va creates a vacillating peculiarity. I wrote this, but I cannot pronounce it. Uh, creates, a creates a vacillating peculiarity. This narrative is further supported by the orchid child riding on the back of the bee, which, of which the purple orchid on the left is holding the leash to, portraying their domestication of other creatures and how their society has developed. Moving on to my next piece. My next piece is called Childhood Beetles. It's also a mixed media piece. Um, it's 30 by 50 cm, so this one's a bit smaller. It's like around the size, a bit larger than the size of an A4 piece of paper. So this piece was inspired by the representation of beetles in Japanese culture. Insect noises are considered soothing and calming, and beetles among other insects, insects are perceived to be indicators or symbols of summer. I had pet beetles when I was younger, so beetles were creatures that I grew fond of over the years. However, as I got older, we no longer kept pet beetles, and I wasn't able to see many beetles afterwards since I live in a city where not many bugs are seen on a daily basis. This is a representation of the fleeting and reminiscent moments of childhood. Summer is a season commonly associated with childhood, so as I transition to fall, and when current life events crowd up my thoughts, the insect noises representing my childhood memory nostalgia always, br always bring me a moment of serenity. Oh my god. Voice. Okay, this next piece is called View. This one's actually just a filler piece because I did not have enough pieces. I was actually going to apply to Canada for a school called Sheridan, and this was one of the challenges that I had to do for that, but I didn't end up applying because I got accepted to RISD but it gave me a piece to put into my portfolio. So this is basically a view from my parents' bedroom window of Hong Kong. Um, so my description is, I tried capturing the tranquility of looking from a distance through this observational drawing of a window view. So this description is a lot shorter because I didn't really have much to say about it. My next piece is probably the piece I'm least proud of. I actually rushed rushed this piece in like one day because I wanted to submit it for a competition but then I didn't end up submitting it because I was too late. This one is called 358 Bao Street. So this is a Chinese Chinese ink painting. Um, it is I'll just read the description. In this world, humans have formed so strong of a connection with food that it became our way of life. The stacked bamboo steamers in the painting are influenced by the myriad of tall buildings and skyscrapers in Hong Kong. Hong Kong being a concrete jungle filled with compact and structured housing may seem cold and alienating, but that is not all that Hong Kong is. Whether you are having some dim sum as a snack by yourself, casually with a friend, or in a family gathering, dim sum can bring comfort to people. Bao means bread buns in Chinese, which is a common dim sum food. I chose the numbers 358 for the street name because they are lucky numbers in Chinese culture. Although dim sum is considered a cheap food, it is embedded into our local culture and is just as valuable as the expensive land that we put monetary values on. So this one, I kind of saved it with the meaning behind the painting because, I mean, it's, it's really cute. I really enjoyed try, like drawing, painting, painting it because I never really used Chinese ink before, so it was quite fun to draw it, but it didn't turn out as well as I hoped, but that is okay. My next piece, which is not really a piece, uh, is my sketchbook work. So I basically just compiled my sketchbook pages into one slide, one photo. I emphasize the two better spreads by making them larger and the other ones are just smaller ones surrounding it. Uh, so for this one, it's also mixed media. Um, for my description, I wrote pages from my sketchbook that illustrate my experimentations with collage observations from my daily life and my original character designs. Yeah. My next piece is also not really a piece it's my digital sketchbook um which is basically my digital art that i draw i just compiled a few into one so the description for this is 
Digital illustrations were created using the app Procreate. These illustrations were inspired by musings from mid mundane happenings. For example, the character slaying the creature invading the peach in the top left illustration was inspired by bug eaten fruits from my relative's peach tree. Okay. Next one, it's a life drawing. My description is... For the drawing on the left, I focused on shadows to create the texture of the cloth on the floor along with the dress. For the drawing on the right, I focused on the fold of the shirt and the way the stripes dance around the body. So, it really doesn't say much. It, I just said like what I focused on when I tried drawing these and tried to make it sound poetic. <laughs> The left one is a charcoal, the right one is an ink drawing. Okay, my next one is also life drawings, but they're colored. The medium is color pencils. So the description for this one is... I focused on complementary and contrasting colors to create shadows and highlights. I used softer lines for the fold of the dress to depict softer fabrics, especially the lightness of the mesh fabric in the green background drawing. So... Yeah, these are just life drawings. I actually had a lot of fun drawing these. Okay, moving on to my next one. We're finally getting to more exciting ones. So my next one is a digital animation. I'll play it now. Okay, so that was my animation. Um, the music was actually made by my friend who is very good at music. So I asked them to make the background music for me. This piece is, or is it a piece? I don't know, but this one is called Milk Tea because the milk plus tea becomes milk tea. Yeah, <laughs> it was just like a fun concept that I wanted to show. And my description for this is really short. It's just how new drink flavors are made. That was my description. So as you can see, there's like a variety of ways you can show your artwork. You don't have to write a lot, but you can also write a lot. And then my next piece is called Juice Box 101. It's actually built in like the same concept as my last piece. Um, it's kind of like the same world where juice boxes are characters um so this one is a digital printout um the description for this one is this beginner's guide to taking care of juice boxes is introduced by three original characters i created which are based on three different common juice box drinks in hong kong the booklet is made in an accordion shape similar to a pamphlet and is and it is compact and portable this booklet can be used as a marketing strategy by being stuck on the back of juice boxes as a part of the packaging. Since it has a more interactive component such as a sticker tracker inspired by supermarket stamp reward systems, it may make the experience of buying juice, juice boxes more playful and fun. So it was like, yeah, a fun concept. I had a lot of fun drawing this actually. <laughs> okay, now on to my last piece. Wait, no. Last piece for my Parsons and Northeastern portfolio. That's of one piece, which is what I use for the RISD challenge. So my next piece is called Warping Memories. This is also a mixed media. <laughs> it's a resin acrylic painting. So I basically had a piece of wood and then I painted using acrylic, but then I pour like another layer of resin on top and I build layers using that so I painted it using layers of resin. This one is called Warping Memories and the description is The brain isn't fully developed until around age 25. Memories, especially from childhood, warp and float in our minds, merging and changing as we try to recall. Can we really recall our memories accurately? Who says I didn't see bees with elephant trunks drinking from flowers sprouting out of a ketchup bottle? Using my childhood memories as inspiration, I encapsulated these memories with a supernatural and dreamlike narrative into layers of resin. By painting it in resin, does it solidify the memories into a tangible reality? Okay, now on to my last piece, which is the what I use for the RISD challenge. This piece is a response because- oh yeah, let me 
introduce the RISD challenge first. So this year for 2021 slash two, um, the prompt is, wait, I forgot what they were. So there are three paired concepts. There's ephemeral and tangible, complexity and contradiction, and chaos and order. And for these paired concepts, you have to basically make an artwork that responds to that. I chose ephemeral and tangible because I think it's quite like a whimsical idea because ephemeral basically means it's short-lived and then tangible is like you can feel it which I think was really interesting. The artwork I made was basically a mobile of like those ornament orbs filled with colored water using ink and then I basically recorded myself cutting them. I'll just I'll just show it here. Play. Okay, so that was my RISD assignment piece. Um, that is it. So that is my portfolio that I used to apply to RISD, Parsons, and Northeastern. Um, hopefully this video helped and gave you some inspiration, but also remember that every portfolio is different. So make what you want and include what you want, uh, but I do recommend having a strong piece in the beginning and the end because that's like the first impression and the last impression and you want those impressions to be good. And I feel like if, if like art is what you want to do and you're serious about it, most likely you are going to get in because what they want is basically a student who is willing to work and is like a good student and like is actually interested in art or at least i think that's what they want <laughs> um but yeah hopefully this video helps and i'm wishing you guys the best if you are a person who is planning to apply to art school Bye.